Hey everyone, it's Honesty Jansen from Home Kateers, and today is day one of the Learn Photoshop for Free, um, a new technique a day for 14 days. Today we're actually going to do several techniques, so let's go ahead and get started. Okay, I have got Photoshop open, and we're just going to very quickly go over some of the basic components of Photoshop to make sure everyone's ready to um, start uh, their projects. So here we go. On the right hand side we have our layers palette as well as our color swatches and styles. Palette on the top. I like my layers palette to be larger because I do like to see all the layers that I'm working with. On the left hand side of my screen is my tools palette. I'm going to drag it over here so you can see it. I like mine to be long and attached to the left, but you can place it wherever you want. If you want yours roaming, there we go. Come on back. There we go. If you want yours roaming and loose um, on your page, then you know what? Move it wherever you want. For me, I like mine over here. It is personal preference, and with um, CS5, it is my my freedom to move it. I also prefer mine to be long versus the short squatty. So there you go. All right, some of our basic tools very quickly. We have our move tool. This is when we want to drag things around. We have our marquee tool, which if we right click, we get additional options. We will be using this tool, but we're not going to we're probably not going to touch it in the first couple of classes. I could be wrong, but I don't think we will. Um, but we will go into it, as well as our lasso and selection and slicing tools. We will be going into those um, later on in the series when we discuss selections and how to uh, select parts and components of pictures. Again, these are photo editing pieces. We are going to be touching the brush and pencil tool today. Um, the magic eraser tool, eraser tool, background eraser tool, all very good tools for you to be aware of and we will go into those more when we are working on photo editing. Paint bucket and gradient tool, by right clicking on our paint bucket we get our gradient tool and our paint bucket tool. And then this is our smudge, blur and sharpen tool. Um, and our text tool which we will be using today as well and our shape. So if we want to draw a rectangle, rounded rectangle, ellipse, polygon, line, or utilize the custom shapes. So I'm trying to think the only other thing I think you really need to be aware of um, would be this lovely little component right here where you see the two colors. We've got a black on the top right now and I have a white on the bottom. This is just your color selection tools. If you're going to use a gradient, then choosing two colors here will give you your options for your gradient selections. Your top color is always the color that you are working with. So this is your foreground color, meaning that if you're going to type text, it's going to be black right now. If I'm going to make a custom to, or a shape, a custom shape, or any of the rectangles and circles, it's going to be black. I can also change it up here, but that's also going to change that color. So I'm going to bring that back to black. Those are the basic tools and that was my very very quick overview of them. Um, as we go through the series you will learn more about each of these tools and then if you have questions in the meantime be sure to post them in the support thread and I will be answering um, hopefully if I don't get inundated everybody's questions. So here we go. Okay, we're going to go ahead and create a new palette or canvas for us to work on while we start learning how to use the brush tools, why we would want to use it, and how to install them. So we're going to hit File, New, and I'm going to do a 2500 by 2500 pixels. You can decide to change that to inches, centimeters, millimeters. That's up to you. I prefer to work in pixels, so mine's at pixels. My background is typically I always do it as transparent. Very rarely do I select white or a background color. Um, that's just my personal preference. I like transparent because a lot of the work that I do I'm saving for the web. And so JPEGs and PNGs will keep that transparent aspect to them. 
Okay, so we have a blank canvas. Now, I'm going to go ahead and paint my canvas, my first layer, which is the very bottom or background. I'm going to go ahead and paint it black. There we go. So we're going to be working on black today. So now I'm going to create a new layer, which if you look down here at the very bottom, it's this one right here on the edge. It says create a new layer when you hover on it long enough. But what it looks like is a posty note with the edge clicked over. Okay. Here we go. And I'm going to select my brush tool. I'm going to change my color from black to a good, clean, crisp white. That way you can see the difference of what I'm doing. So when you select your brush tool, you're going to pop on over up here. And more than likely, yours is going to look something like that when you do yours. You're going to come up and you're going to have this big round dot and you're going to see a dot up there. And you're probably going to end somewhere around these grass or leaves for your options of what you can select. Obviously, I have more than that. And you're probably asking yourself, why and how? Well, getting Photoshop brushes is incredibly easy. I recommend Brush Easy, um, B-R-U-S-H-E-E-Z-Y dot com. They have a ton of free ones. If you just click on brushes, and you will see, you know, things like this cute little brush pattern set. And you, all you do is you download it, and it comes in a zipped file. Once you've um, unzipped it into a file of your choice, you go back to Photoshop, and in your palette here, you can choose to load brushes or your preset manager. I recommend using your preset manager as the load brushes only allows you to do one set of brushes and typically you're going to want to load in a couple of them. So you'll hit your preset manager and right here you'll see where you can select you know if you're going to be loading brushes, swatches, gradient styles, patterns, contours, custom shapes, or tools. We're going to be doing brushes. So you click on the load here and as you can see I have um, a lot of brushes so I'm going to actually load this set in. And you'll see that the new brushes that I loaded have come down here to the bottom. And every brush has got a number underneath it. That is the maximum size of that brush in pixels. So when you're working on a project that's, you know, uh, 550 by 750 in pixels, then obviously a 2400 pixel um, jack-o'-lantern will be sufficient for what you need. If you're working on something that's a lot larger than, and then, you know, say it's a 10,000 by 10,000, well, that 2,400 would work if you only need a small uh, jack-o'-lantern. So keep that in mind when you're looking at the size of brushes. Okay, so now that we've loaded all the brushes in here that we want, we're going to click Done. And now we're still on our brush. Now, there, when you right-click on this brush tool, you've got the brush tool and you have the pencil tool. And you may be wondering, okay, what's the difference? Well, that's what I want to show you. I'm going to create two layers. Layer two, I'm going to pop over here. And let's do, let's do this jack-o'-lantern, who's a 2400 pixel. As we can see, he's really big. And I want to do two of them side by side. So I'm going to actually bring this down to 715. So we are in our brush tool with this jack-o'-lantern at 715, and I'm going to just pop them on there one time. I'm going to pop over to my next layer, layer 3, which is now going to be on top of my layer 2. I'm going to switch to the pencil tool, and I'm going to do the same jack-o'-lantern, which he was previously selected. Um, in white beside him. And while that may not look like a huge difference to you, I'm going to bring him down just a bit so you can see. may not look like a huge difference to you right now. Let me um, zoom in on these two so you can really see the difference. Okay, so in our pencil tool, which is this one right here, 
what we're seeing is a lack of the little lines that we see in our brush tool. It's more of a photocopy, hard, crisp line, whereas our brush pumpkin has more rough edges and has more character and dimension to him. So depending on what you're going for in your final result, you're either going to want the hard, crisp, clean lines of the pencil, or you're going to want the rough characteristics of the brush. Again, it kind of comes down to what you're trying to stylize with your brushes. And I want to show you some examples of a few others. So those are our jack-o'-lanterns. Now, I want to turn these two off because I'm going to move into something else. So I'm going to use this little eye, and I'm going to click it, and I'm going to click it, and now I'm going to add another layer. I'm going to go back to my pencil. I'm going to turn it into a brush. I'm going to come up here, and I am actually going to go ahead and select, uh, let's do one of these vintage stamps that I just put in, and we're going to put it in at... Let's stick with the, we'll do 764. So here is one stamp in a brush. I'm going to switch this over to a pencil. Select it. Carson seems to be upset out there. All right. And here is the pencil underneath it. Now, I'm pretty sure you can tell the difference just in the coloring because the opacity is different with the brush than what it is with our um, pencil tool. While the, the pencil tool gives a good, crisp, clean line, it also gives us a harder color. Whereas this particular brush right here, it's more of a... Um, while the opacity shows 100%, it's like painting, and it's just one layer. So only by doing one layer, we didn't really get that clean white. So I want to show you again what happens when you decide to use the brush tool. So I'm going to do this one right next to it, and I clicked it once, twice, three times. So now I have the brush tool twice. On this upper right hand where I only clicked it once I got kind of a gray so it looks like I just kind of laid it on top and didn't do two coats if you will the next one I clicked it three times I clicked my mouse three times while holding steady to get a nice rich white color that I was going for my preference is typically for the brush tool because I like the curve, I like the lines, I like the nice kind of um, softness to it. Whereas the pencil, I'm going to move it over so you can see. Let's enlarge this just a bit for you. You see the line difference there. It's very, very hard and crisp. Whereas I've got a nice flowing line for the brush. Pencils on the bottom, brushes on the top. It is your choice. But those are the differences between using the brush tool and the pencil tool. Now you're probably asking yourself, when will I ever use that tool? Well, let's just go ahead and show you. I'm going to open up one of my recent images from, let's do food and wine. Or here, Carson made a cookie yesterday at SeaWorld. So this is the cookie that he made. And I am going to go ahead and select with my eyedropper this orange color. And I'm going to grab my brush tool. And I'm going to try to find um, a nice Halloween. Here we go. I'm going to use this one. And see, it's really big. I don't need it quite that big, so I'm going to bring it down some. I'm going to put him right up there. And as you can see, I've done him in a few times. Oops. I just made a cardinal error. So, sorry. I'm going to put a new layer in first. 
then grab my brush tool, and then, four, five, there we go, put them on there. Now, if you're asking yourself, how did I take him off after I did that? Well, I hit my Control Z, Control Alt Z, and stepped back to remove the steps that I had done. So now he's sitting in his own layer, so I can turn him off and on. I'm going to add one more layer in here. I'm going to select a white. I'm going to go back to my brushes, and I am going to scroll all the way to the top. I'm going to grab a little one. That should work. And on a separate layer underneath my um, ghost, I am going to just color him in. That way, he has a little bit of dimension. Not necessarily the friendliest ghost, but he fits for the purpose today. So, something like this allows for me now to go in and add a nice little graphic onto my image. And here we go go on top of my ghost and I could put a little bit of text right inside of him and I'll just pick one of my favorites here my bubble body and just put for the color go with the purple yummy and we'll do sea world 10, 5, 13. I'm going to enlarge it just a bit. And we'll be going over this, what I'm doing right here, in just a little bit on part two of today. So, with a brush tool, I was able to add this little graphic on top of an image. I hope that um, helps to clear up why we would be using brush tools. I'm sure you can think of a lot of projects especially printables where brushes can come in handy. All right, if you have any questions on how to use the brush tool, how to load brush tools, be sure to post those in the support thread or the support um, post. All right, on to step two.